So a lot of guys say, okay, Bobby, I get it. I shouldn't text her that much. I should uh, not reveal my feelings too soon or buy her gifts. But when I'm with her, what can I say to her that elicits that chase, that gets her start chasing me? That's what we're gonna cover in this video. We're gonna give you three phrases that get a woman chasing you. Bobby Rio I'm here with Rob Judge. Hello, hello. And you know, Rob, as well as I do, that our, our clients, they once they kind of understand the anti-nice guy mentality of I shouldn't be doing this, the next question that comes up is, well, what can I, because we all want to be proactive. It's, we don't want to just be like, well, I'm not going to do this. We also go, what can I do? And they say, well, what can I say to her to get her chasing? What can I introduce into the conversation? So why don't we give them three quick ideas of things you can say, phrases you can use that unconsciously trigger that chase instinct. We call it an instinct because it's kind of like if you tap somebody in the knee, the instinct is to kick forward. Or we talk about the cat the cat and the string where if you, if you um, wave a string in a cat's face, the cat's instinct is to chase that string. Well, women are the same way. There's certain things where their instinct takes over and they begin to chase. And uh, let's go through three quick examples of things that you can say that kick that instinct in. Absolutely, and you know, and the thing about all three of these these, these um, examples that we're going to give, or, or, or techniques that we're going to give, they're all predicated on the same idea that we only chase the things that we value, right? Like we chase high value things. Um, we don't chase the things that are that are abundant, or you know, we can find anywhere, or that that are low value. So all three of these different techniques. Um, they're essentially designed to convey your value. And we'll kind of key in a little bit on, on exactly what sort of values that these convey, but just keep that in the back of your mind that you have to you know, approach this like my time has value, my opinions have value, I have value, and essentially what we're gonna teach you, you know, what these three techniques actually do is that it conveys that in a way without actually coming up and saying, hey, I have value because you can't actually tell a woman anything. Everything has to be, you know, told through subtext and subtlety. So that, you know, leads us into these, these, these three techniques. And the first of these three is what we call the false time constraint. Mm -hmm. This is where you're conveying to her that your time has value. This is really good because we get a lot of clients that we work with who are trying to get back with an ex, mm. right? When you're trying to get back with an ex or a girl you might have messed up with, this is probably the number one most important thing you have to do. You have to, this isn't just an add-on, you have to do this when you're setting up a date with a girl that you've messed up a little bit with and you're trying to convince her to get out. Um, so, so yeah. So I'm so glad you pointed that out because that, that again, that dovetails with this idea of value because the reason that it's so difficult to get out that ex or that girl that you kind of screwed up with is a lot of the re a lot of the way that she's seeing you right now is she's seeing your time as not having a lot of value. She's seeing, or, or let me rephrase that, not that your time doesn't have value, but she's seeing her time as having more, more value than, than your time. She's seeing her as a little bit higher value than you. And that's why she's going to be very hesitant to meet up with you until you convey to her that, hey, my time has value. You should see my time as having value. So how you convey to a woman that your time has value without actually coming out and saying it is you use this idea of the false time constraint. And the way this works is, let's say you're, you want to meet up with a woman. She's, you, know, you know she's going to be hesitant. It's a, you know, like I said, it might be an ex, it might be a girl that you went on a date with and screwed up, but this could even be a girl that you just First, met. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like that's fine too. A, Tinder, yeah. a girl that you're talking to on Tinder that you want to get her out, how do you relieve, not only, it serves two purposes, right? It relieves some of her reluctance of, oh no, I'm going to get stuck with this guy all night, mm. but it also signals your own values. Exactly. Yeah. So what you do is, and it's so simple, you just, when you're, when you're kind of hammering out those logistics, Hey, you know, what are you on Tuesday? I have about two hours between four and six. Let's grab a cup of coffee. Essentially, just like the name implies, the false time constraint is your putting a constraint on your time so she sees it as having value. She sees it as, oh, okay, like I could show up. And like Bobby said, in the back of her mind, if there's any reluctance, there any, any sort of like where she's like, yeah, well, like I kind of, you know, she's curious, but she's like, I don't want to get stuck on, a, on, on an awkward date or I don't want to get stuck if, if I'm not feeling it. That objection is now answered because she's like, all right, well, like, like, like even if it's terrible, I'm only gonna be there for an hour. So that could like knock her over the fence where she will meet up with you. Yeah, I had a client that I was working with and he, his, his girlfriend, or she was actually, they were on a break and she was in another town and he was like, oh, I wanna go meet her. But it was kind of this weird thing because he can't just like, like say, hey, I'm in your area. 
in a way, it's like he's got to go take a train there. Mm. So I go, make sure, say, hey, I have a stop over there. I've got about like, like a little under an hour, but it would be great to grab a quick coffee. And now you're, f and I go, but you got to live up to it in this sense with, with, with her situation. I'm like, you end it. You go, hey, it was mm. cool. And then no matter how good it's going, you're, you walk away because you leave her wanting more. So it, it does convey two things. It conveys, A, that it, it allows the girl, especially if it's in a situation where she's on the fence, the worst thing a girl fears is, I'm going to get stuck with this guy mm. all night. Because we've all been in that situation, whether it's a friend or somebody where you're like, you're like, this person's all right, but I don't want to get stuck with them. So you, you eliminate that objection mm. immediately by going, hey, I got to get up early in the morning, but it'd be cool to meet up with you for an hour um, after I get off from work, right? That, and then as Rob said, it also implies um, value. You can also use this. This was back when we were single in a bar situation where you're out at a party or a bar and you want to approach a girl. One of the classic things to say is you walk over to a girl, hey, I only got five minutes because I got to get back to my friends, but just wanted to say that. And then, and then you go into whatever you're opening with because now, again, she doesn't fear I'm going to get stuck with this guy. And she yeah. also thinks like this guy's already willing, wanting, thinking about going back to her friends which raises your value because you're like friends are more important than that conversation. So and your time is yeah. scarce. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's, uh, let's go into the next one. Absolutely. So the next one is you, where you playfully disqualify yourself. And again, this dovetails, you know, this is more of this segues nicely from what we were just talking about because like, the idea of playfully disqualifying yourself is what most guys do, the intuitive thing that guys do is they, they, they're always trying to qualify, qualify themselves. They're always trying to say, oh, you, you like basketball? I like basketball. We would get along great. You know, there's a term Bobby and I use, we call it bobblehead dolling, where a guy just mm -hmm. constantly just, just bobs his head up and down. Oh yeah, I agree, I agree, I agree. And he's doing that because he's trying to qualify himself. He's trying to show her, hey, uh, we have all these interests. Make, yeah, we'd make a great couple, right? Mm. That's essentially, I'd make a great boyfriend because we have all these interests. It's what you're saying to her, verbally exactly. and through your body line and everything. So what Rob and, and, is saying yeah. is like, do the opposite. Do, do the opposite. Because again, when, when, you know, think about yourself, when, you know, even out, outside of a romantic context, whenever, you, if you're trying to buy something, right? Or you're, you're not, not that you're trying to buy something, but say like you're looking at a, at a car or, or whatever, and there's an overly zealous salesman that every objection you make, he's like telling you, no, no, you need this car. No, 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 no. Okay, like, yeah, okay, I understand, you know, you, you know, whatever. And then, and then he's constantly trying to qualify the sale. You, it, it, it puts you, yeah, you just like, it just feels disgusting. You just feel like this weird, icky feeling where you're just like, you know what, I just, this guy's trying too hard. I don't want any part of this. Whereas, you know, when you disqualify yourself, and especially when you do it playfully, you essentially, number one, you're communicating that, again, you have value, that you have standards, that you're not, you, you know, that you're not just going to qu qualify yourself because she looks great and she's saying something that you're necessarily going to, you know, you're going to try to, you know, shoehole that in or, or shoehorn that into a reason why you guys should be, be together. So she says something and, and particularly is, this should come from a place of authenticity and honesty where she says something you don't agree with. She, you know, it could be, you know, some, you know, movie or, or, or so, something that she, that she likes that maybe you disagree with her. It could even be like an opinion that she has that you disagree with her. You playfully say, oh my God, like, like you like that band. <sighs> yeah. You know what? <laughs> we would we would ne like we would never work out because we would just fight over music all day. We'd have like makeup sex and we'd fight over music again, and it would just never work out. So I'm gonna have to put you in the friend zone. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, exactly. Like, and, and again, something that is true to you, and something that's funny. Like, for an example for me, right, is like I never understood hockey, right? I never like so like any even somebody's like I like hockey. I'm like hockey, like so like I would say to a girl, you like hockey? Something weird about hockey. People who like <laughs> hockey scare me. I, I don't get it, like. Like, you know, and it's like playful, but you're also like not saying, I like hockey too. That's awesome. Yeah. And now she's like, what do you mean? It's that scares you. And again, a lot of this stuff is designed not only to get her chasing you, but it's also to create a better vibe, a more playful vibe between you. So by disqualifying her, Rob, I mean, I love what you said. You know, you and me would just fight all the time. I, I, what I found out is girls who like hockey, I just fight with them all the time. I mean, the makeup sex is great, of course, but we're just always fighting and like, it's just not going to... It's just disqualifying, playfulness, all of that leaned into it in, in, in a phrase like that, which is what makes it good. So let's, let's jump into yeah. the next one. No, it's really quick. because <laughs> It's so funny to bring up hockey because I, 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 I specifically can remember a date where a girl, she actually worked for a hockey team and she told me, she's like, oh, I work, you know, it's actually the Golden Knights. Like, I, I, you know, I work for the Golden Knights. I don't know, she worked in the marketing. And it was just, this was like maybe like the first you know, minute into the date. And I just said to her, I was like, you work for the Golden Knights? I said, 
I, I said, this is not going to work out. I hate the Golden Knights. I hate hockey. I hate, you know, in fact, I hate all sports. And she, she just started cracking up. And again, a lot of guys are afraid to do that because, you know, they're afraid, oh, if I, if I disqualify myself, she might. But, but it's the exact opposite is what happens, is that you actually are, are conveying value. And also you're showing that you're playful. And again, the reaction I got and the reaction you'll get if you do this, do this the right way is she'll laugh and then she'll either give reasons why you would work out. And I think I'm, what, from what I remember, you know, she started saying stuff like, oh, you know, like, oh, no, but, but, but uh, like, like, if you hang out with me, like, you, you would like hockey. You just don't understand. She's you qualifying know, herself. Exactly. Too, which, is, which is the place you want to be. Which is she's chasing, which is, the, you know, the point of this video. Yeah. And, um, you know, so even the next one is kind of, this kind of goes into the next one because it's also sort of counterintuitive. It's the opposite of what most guys do, right? And the next one is to do what? To, to ask her to do you a favor. Whereas most guys are like, how can I do her a favor? Yeah. Thinking that's gonna make Do her something like nice it. for her, yeah. On the opposite side, it's how can I have her do me a favor, which is actually more of a chase trigger for her than the opposite. So, oh, give yeah. an example of, of how this works out. Well, you know, and, and there's a lot of ways to do this, but one of the simplest ways is just like when you're in a venue, say you're at a, you're at, you're at a bar, right? Ask her to hold your drink. It's something that can be as simple as asking her, hey, can you hold my drink for a second? And you know, while you go do something, you go to tie your shoe. It can be as simple as that. But the idea is that you just want to subtly convey you're shifting that dynamic rather than what, like Bobby said, what most guys do is you're like, oh, how can I, you know, uh, you know, show her I'm a chivalrous gentleman, like, 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 you know, on my on my white horse and do all these great things for her. And and, and again, and and any guy that's gone that route knows that, that that doesn't work so but it's so funny how if you just invert this in a counterintuitive way this works like gangbusters so it could be something as simple as oh hey you, you know hold my drink for a second while you go to tie your shoe or go to the bathroom you know whatever you're doing but just as she's holding that drink weirdly you know when you come back and, and, and take that drink back from her you're going to be in better standing with her than than when you when you handed it to her yeah, something in her brain goes, I'm doing this favor, I must like him. And this, is, this isn't like something like, this is something Ben Franklin. I remember reading a biography or, or, or something on Ben Franklin, and he talked about this idea, if you want somebody to like you, get them to do you a favor. And he was in this like long-term feud with some other guy, and he's like, how can I, how can I end this and get that person? And, he, and, and he, he, you know, the normal person was like, I'm gonna volunteer to do them a favor. But he actually asked the guy, hey, can I borrow a book? Mm. And he's like, the guy's like, yeah, and then, and that ended the feud because something in our brain, when we're doing somebody a favor, is like, oh, I must like this person, right? When she's holding you the drink, there's, it's, we call it like a trigger, like a, like a chase trigger, because it's like, I'm doing this because I like them, right? Um, similar to even the uh, idea of squeezing you in, right? Well, I'm willing, I'll take that hour of his time mm -hmm. before he goes to sleep or before he has to go meet somebody else because I, I must be doing it because I like him, mm -hmm. or else I would say, no, I'm not, you know. All of this is designed to ignite that, that trigger in her. We also, I mean, Rob, uh, based on this idea of doing a favor, if, if you have a, a woman that you want to reignite things with, we have a, a text that's totally based around this that we've covered in other videos, the can I get a favor text, which is kind of is a very innocent way to get back in with a woman who might be pulling away. Um, all of this that we talk about, it's all makes up this idea of turning the tables and getting a woman chasing you because the natural role for a man is to go, as we've mentioned several times in this video, is what can I do to get her to like me? And when you're thinking like that and you're doing things like that, women aren't dumb. They know you're doing it because you're trying to get her to like you. And when it comes to really getting a woman to fall for you, it's like, well, what can I do to create her wanting to win me over, right? Because when she senses you're trying to win her over, well then her, she puts the brakes on. But when she finds herself wanting to win you over, it's like she can't stop. She, it's like, you know, we've all been in the situation where, where we're in sort of, we call it a mode, I gotta, I gotta get this girl. Yeah. You wanna get her in that position. And we have a, a, a technique we call the scrambler. And there's a video that we're gonna link to below where I kind of walk you through and I reverse engineer why it works and how little by little, step by step, you begin introducing things into an interaction that gives her the feeling that she's winning you over, right? Because when she feels like, oh, I'm winning this guy over, there's something addicting about that. I, I want to fully win him over as opposed to, he's already won over, let mm. me decide if I like him. Yeah. So everything in this video that we talk about, this entire technique is getting her going, I got to win this guy over. 
little by little, step by step. You can click the link below. Now, if you like this video, let us know by hitting a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave us a comment and let us know what you wanna see us cover in future videos.